Now going to the fall season, the Celtic people of the north used to believe that during the fall season their year began. And actually for the Celtics, their New Year's was November 1st. October 31st was the final day of the year for the Celtic people of the north. And that day was called the day of Samhain. And this individual, well, Iyadu Billah, was supposed to be the, 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 their god of, of, of the spirits of the dead, of evil again. And according to their belief, the evil spirits would rise to the surface and would terrorize people on that evening. And on that evening, if you did something wrong to a person, they'd come back to get you on that night. So some people would put on a disguise. So you couldn't recognize them on October 31st, on that evening. And then they would be safe. Also, they would burn fires. Now the only thing we find left of that is the jack-o'-lantern that they were put inside of their window, window made from the pumpkin. What actually happened in Europe is that the church moved All Saints Day, a day for the saints. They moved it from May 13th to November 1st in 1834 AD. And so what they said was that the 31st night is All Hallows Evening. All Hallows Evening, which in America later became known as Halloween. Halloween. And they depict the forces of evil. What is happening now is that the children put on disguises. They dress as little devils, little witches as goblins, vampires, anything evil, and they go out. And now with the new American way, they do trick or treat. And they come to your house asking for food. Do they do that here in Miami? Trick or treat. They knock on your door in the disguise. And some Muslims, thinking they, they want to be Americans, or they want to be Canadians, they send their little children um, and they're in little disguises. So what are you going to dress them as? A little angel? What are you going to be? How are you going to dress and go out there? And so the reality that we recognize is that number one, this is the day of Samhain. And the Quran tells us, Inna shaitan alil insani aduwun mubin that the devil is an open enemy to humanity. There is no compromise with the devil. And so we don't play around and disguise ourselves as little devils, little shayateen. We do not disguise ourselves as this because it is an open enemy to the people of monotheism. Also, there are a number of other aspects. What is happening now, as you may know in America, is that there is a new church coming about which is called the Church of Satan. Well, Iyadu Billah. And in the 60s in San Francisco, the church um, was initiated. And right now in the American army, if you are Jewish and you die, they bring you a rabbi. If you're Muslim, they'll bring you an imam. If you're Christian, they'll bring you a priest or a minister. If you're registered as part of the church of Satan, they bring you a priest from the church of Satan. And he is performing these rites and rituals calling on the devil to accept his initiate. And so this is growing in this society. And they actually did a couple movies. They did this Rosemary's Baby. Right? They, they also, uh, The Exorcist. And a number of movies they did to frighten people with evil. That you will be so afraid of evil. And they show the priests as bumbling idiots. Falling down over their feet. Can't do anything. Running away from the devil. And the devil is a businessman in his suits. And he has the power of lightning and everything. So even though the devil dies in the end, you end up being more afraid of the devil than anything else. That's part of the plot to brainwash people to be afraid of the shaitan. The reality is, is that the Prophet said um, uh, that, that the, the upper hand is better than the lower hand. Al yad al uliya khayrun that the upper hand is better than the lower hand. What that means is you should be the one who gives and don't beg. That we should not be begging. And so to send a Muslim child out to trick or treat is a demeaning, lowering thing. You ask them to beg people for food. Then they're dressed up in a, in, 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 as a way that they're not. Then when the candies and, and things come in the bag, how do you know what it is they actually gave you? 
Is it halal? Most of the candies today are made with gelatin, with glycerin. They're made with pork products. We had one person in our area, in the Boston area where I grew up, one person in our area, in our project, he, he, he used to sit back and he used to give everybody X-lax. You know X-lax? He would give you chocolate and he puts X-lax in the thing. And then he goes around and waits the next day to see everybody. So they can do anything to you, man. You have no control over the situation. You have no control. And what is also happening is that there are some evil, wicked-minded people who are attacking children on that night. I don't know about Miami, but in Canada now, they openly say on the television, do not send your children trick-or-treating by themselves. Do not go to in darkened streets. Move as a group. Don't go to a house that you don't know the people on the inside. And there are literally groups of Satanists who are capturing children and they're performing a rite, sacrificing the child on that evening of Samhain, supposedly to get more spiritual power. It's happening right now. And so from so many angles, Muslims should have nothing to do with Halloween. And if your children are in school, go to the teacher. Go to the teacher and make it clear to the teacher, we do not involve our children in these ceremonies. Even the Jehovah's Witnesses will go to the teacher and tell them, take my child out of Halloween. They don't even believe in that. Take my child even out of your Christmas. They're not involved in that. What can happen during these occasions, if you want them to draw pictures of pumpkins or, you know, fall plants, okay. But we don't want to be involved in these confused rituals that, that are giving signals from many different angles. And so, in conclusion, we recognize the fact that the, the present system of rituals and holidays in this country and in the Western countries is a confused hodgepodge of cultural rituals. And it is important for Muslims to have basira, that they should have the insight to look through affairs and do not just blindly follow the ways of the Christians and the Jews. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, you will follow them. You will follow the people who came before you inch by inch, foot by foot. Even if they crawl into the hole of a lizard, you crawl inside there with them. And then they said, who are these people? Are they the Christians and the Jews? And the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, who else? And so it has come to pass. And you can't Islamicize these occasions. You can't use Arabic names and Islamic symbols to make it halal. We have to take a stand. And secondly, it is important for Muslims to cherish their own holidays. When the Eid al-Fitr comes, take the day off. There are some Muslims who go to work on Eid. They go to Eid prayer and they go to work. So what happens to your children? They don't have a chance to, to, to relax and enjoy themselves. Organize an activity. Bring the families together. Eat together. Do things together. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together. Make it a happy occasion for them. They will remember their Eids. Eid al-Fitr, Eid al-Adha. If they don't, then they get involved in Christmas, in Easter, in Halloween, where even in the Christian tradition now, it is confusing. And many of the Christians now, Seventh-day Adventists, Jehovah's Witnesses, and many people are taking a stand. And they're saying, we do not want to follow the pagan religion. So what about those who have been blessed with monotheism? And so I want to leave you with these words. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would help the younger generation to be able to take a stand, especially for the Muslims to take a stand and for those non-Muslims to try to understand what Islam really is. To try to understand that our society, that we, what we are living in in our society, our moral standards are being lowered to the point where if people of conscience do not take a stand, then we will be living in a state of confusion. In Canada, common law marriages are practiced more than regular marriages. In Quebec, in the French province of Canada, it has the highest, second highest rate of common law marriages on earth is in Quebec. And they say these marriages only last at the most five years. So if the families are broken apart, if children are being molested, 
if women have no um, sanctuary or protection in the society, even in the White House, if nowhere is safe, then the basis, the essence of the society itself is become rotten. And this will influence the economic situation, the political situation, all aspects of life. So I leave you with the, with the thought that people of conscience should uh, take uh, time, study history, go back to the source of the religions, and you'll find that all of the religions are based in Tawheed, in the oneness of God. It will take you right back to the source. And when you think about a Muslim now, realize it's not somebody who's thinking about blowing up the Empire State Building. That's stereotype and that's Hollywood. That's Hollywood. Islam is based on peace, submission to the Creator. When we meet each other, we say, Assalamu Alaikum, peace be upon you. And we pray for peace for all people.